um, I was videotaping on my uh, GoPro. I'm having just some issues with my GoPro. And um, because of those issues, I'm now moving to my backup camera again. Uh, so I, I start off by talking about, you know, we had already shown how uh, I had cleaned out the interior of the car. And uh, taken out all the seats and carpeting and actually wiped it down and so forth. And now it's time to start working on the dashboard. Because the dashboard also has airbags in it. And as I've stated in the past, um, we're going to have a roll cage in here. And so I can't afford to have any part of this roll cage hit by an airbag. Uh, if an airbag happens to go off if I get into a crash. Uh, that's the worst thing that can happen. Is an airbag hit a metal bar that bends or breaks, so the airbag deploys, deflects itself because it hits a metal bar, or whatever the case may be, that would just be bad news. So I got to get rid of all the airbags, and so uh, I need to start taking those airbags out of the dash. So there's, a, you know, there's an airbag in the steering wheel. There are knee airbags. Um, you can actually see the sign. Um, for the passenger side airbag underneath here and so um, we need to remove those so I've already removed the uh, the driver's side and I don't think any of that was captured on my GoPro so here's the airbag right here and I actually use my uh, you know just see, just remember again this car has been disconnected its battery has been disconnected so uh, everything I'm doing here is safe uh, the airbag cannot deploy and so, you know, make sure that the air, the uh, battery is completely disconnected before you attempt any of these maneuvers that we're talking about today. So I use a sawzall. I sawed off the bottom part of the plastic here. It was pretty simple. Got to the airbag, was able to remove the three um, screws at the back of it and then pull it out. So you see right now, you see this uh, actuator here that uh, deploys the airbag. So... Um, I'll uh, put a, tr a resistor in that so that the uh, car thinks the airbag is still connected. Uh, the next thing I'll be working on is a passenger side airbag. And then last, I'll be working on the steering wheel. Uh, last, I'll be working on the steering wheel because unlike these two sides, when I remove the airbags, there's no panels I need to put back over it. But the steering wheel, of course, I need to replace the steering wheel. So I should be taking the steering wheel off, not just taking the airbag out, and actually putting on a new racing steering wheel. So, uh, let's keep it moving. Looking at the passenger side for the airbag, um, again, uh, just by looking at the sign on the front of the, um, uh, front of the uh, glove box, you can see the airbag is contained with at least... It definitely looks like the airbags contained within it. So, um, the airbags inside the glove box itself. So I have a choice here. I can just remove the glove box altogether. Now I have a functioning glove box. Or I can, um, I know where that's from. Or I can have a, uh, a box that works. Uh, so I got to take the uh, airbag out of it and put the glove box back on. So that's what we're looking at right now. And uh, this should be exciting. And one more thing. There's another airbag. So when you pull this down, and that's where they keep the uh, owner's manual, there is another airbag right there. See that white part? That's an airbag. So that's going to need to be pulled out too. And this is the cabling for that. So the cabling here needs to be disconnected and the airbag pulled out. And the cabling here needs to be disconnected, possibly airbag pulled out of there. Ooh, that's going to be something. Oh boy, no fun. No fun. Uh, I've been working on the um, removal of the passenger side. Um, airbags and I've gotten both of them disconnected I've actually removed the knee version this is the cable to it the knee airbag is gone uh, 
I gotta put this back on. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. And then um, this one up here, basically I gotta take care of the take the entire dash out. I'm gonna leave it, but I've gotten the cables disconnected from it, as you can see right there. And uh, so the uh, the airbag's there, but the cables are disconnected from it from the disconnection points that make the airbag actually take off, uh, explode. Um, so we're fine. Um, and that airbag pops up top. It's not going to be in the way of a metal bar. I'm not putting a metal bar across the top. I'm putting a metal bar across the bottom. So um, I think we'll be fine. So, and again, the airbag is not even connected, so it shouldn't even be a concern. But that's probably the only airbag out of all these that will be left in here. Everything else is, all the other airbags have been taken out. So the only last one to go is a steering wheel. And uh, that one shouldn't be actually as hard as the rest of these. So uh, I still won't have to use my saws all. That's for sure. All right, DPDers, I am working on the steering wheel now, and uh, we've got the um, we've got the airbag horn section uh, taken off the steering wheel. The steering wheel is cocked to the right because the wheels are slightly turned right, but that's okay. Um, and so um, we'll now be focused on removing the airbag. Uh, out of this safely again the um, uh, battery cable is disconnected so we shouldn't have any issues there we'll take off the actual steering wheel and then we'll be done disconnecting every airbag in this car so uh, that's a that's a big feat for us so that we can then proceed and actually start installing some stuff so uh, in the interior so here we go Alright DPDers, how's it going? So now today we're going to have to work on these seats. Um, looking at how uh, the airbags work within the seats themselves, I got access to the wiring underneath the existing seats and I have to put a resistor on those um, connections that go to that wiring harness that connects underneath the seat. So that again, so that's two more airbags I still have to account for. So although I have airbags accounted for all around the uh, <clears throat> edge part of the interior, the steering wheel, the knee side, the driver side um, uh, airbag, the knee for the passenger side airbag, the uh, frontal portion passenger side of the airbag, the side impact bags that work along the side curtains along the side of the car. I also have to work on uh, the airbags within the seats themselves. So I have to put resistors within them and the way to do that is to pull the wiring harness that's actually attached underneath. This is uh, the passenger seat by the way. So that's underneath the passenger seat. So it's one of those things where there's a bunch of these connections I got to pull out there's this, uh, uh, they call this like a water, um, I can't remember the name of it, but like a water thing that has to come out. Um, a seat position sensor that dictates where, um, how much impact and force the airbag is going to have based on the seat uh, position. I got to disconnect all this wiring harness and get to where the actual um, uh, airbag connects to and uh, um, and then be able to trick it so um, have to work on that and uh, pull all that out and so uh, they do that for not only the passenger side but also for the driver side we are working on the seats and getting them prepared to be installed uh, the new racing seats installed we're also working on the steering wheel and um, getting it ready to be uh, installed again uh, we've taken the old steering wheel off, we've removed the wiring harness and the controls and uh, you see the airbag um, uh, 
connectors there and so one of the things that we will be doing is we will be um, putting on some resistors onto the end of that and with that um, we are also there's a new steering wheel there and uh, other things we also did we worked on removing the harnesses out of the old seats so out of the passenger side seat which is the one there on top and the uh, driver side seat which is the one there on the bottom you can tell it's the driver side seat because this is where the airbag is and so I had to remove that connection off the top of the airbag that goes right there on top and so this is the wiring harness for the seat on the driver's side so I had to remove all that underneath and uh, you see the uh, orange uh, connector there that's where it goes the airbag that goes actually in the seat so we'll put a resistor in that as well and um, and then what's interesting is because the passenger side has that seat that is weight sensitive it uses a they call it like a water bag um, and this, so this is filled with I guess some sort of water solution and so that's what tells the weight and it gives you that ding so it connects to this contraption here it gives you that ding um, if you have too much weight in that seat and the seat belts not connected so um, that's what that's for and what I've done is I removed all the wiring harness that even connects to the old seat. So I've cut out uh, the seat belt, the actual seat belt clip that goes in, kept all that wiring on it. And so we shouldn't have that issue anyway, but you know, it's going to all be stuck underneath the seat. We're all wrapped all nice and tight underneath the new racing seat and uh, keep it there. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't have any dings. I shouldn't have not one ding. I've, I've been so careful and trying to remove all these wiring harnesses perfectly and try to make sure we can still keep them in a sense functioning and tricking the system that everything's working fun functionally correctly. And uh, one of the other things that I also did was, let me go around here, it's probably easier to show you, is that uh, I've got some uh, floor liners. From WeatherTech and so you're not allowed to race with floor mats um, but once you take the carpeting out you know your feet are going to be slipping uh, on that metal so you gotta put something down so what I did was I put down some um, let me show you here I put down some grit tape can you see that underneath here yeah I put down some grit tape and uh, and then I put down the uh, floor liners from WeatherTech, and that gives it a nice smooth finish and, uh, you know, virtually, again, you know, grip uh, for your feet um, within the foot wells. So the worst feeling is uh, to feel like you don't, uh, you can't put your feet down anywhere and you're just slipping all over the place as you're trying to drive this car as fast as possible. So. You don't want that feeling. So as I'm hooking up the steering wheel, you got to think this these kind of things through. You know, here's the airbag uh, connections. Here is where the wiring harness goes for the steering wheel. Um, you know, again, you know, if you may remember, um, the steering wheel is already cocked to the right, and so um, I have to make sure that these are lined up correctly. That's how the steering wheel is going to look. Um, once I put it back on, I've already undisconnected the battery. It's already too late. So I'm not going to reconnect the battery and move the steering wheel back straight for this step because it's going to screw up the airbag sensors and everything else I'm not ready to deal with. So having said that, I have to think about how I need to put all this back on here. So here's the wiring harness. Okay. And um, if you look at it, okay, here's the main connector that goes into here okay and then this actually goes to the horn all right so I'm gonna snip this off I'm gonna snip this uh, connector off and then um, that's gonna feed through this okay you see that hole underneath there 
that hole right there is where the horn wire is going to be fed through. The um, uh, this is going to be mounted like that. See that? And then all this these wires, the airbag wires, and the rest of the most of the wiring harness will be tucked in the back, tucked in the back of this, tucked away. All right, they'll just sit there. All right, and I'm still, as you can see on the wiring harness, I'm still leaving controls on there. I don't necessarily need uh, the radio to work, okay? But the other side of the controls are very important to keep because this is a 2015, and if you want to get into any of those menus inside the car itself that are up on the dashboard, this is the only way to get to them. So I got to keep uh, this portion of the wiring harness working, functioning. Um, and then mount this on the side of the steering wheel or wherever I want to mount it um, later. So I can still have that functionality. And then goes on the rest of the um, quick release system here from NRG. Um, and then only thing that connects through this system is the cabling for the horn which will still work on the new uh, the new steering wheel I actually have a horn button that goes on the front there and it'll work once I install everything correctly so this is the way it's gonna look eventually all right everyone the steering wheel is officially on uh, as you can tell it's an Alcantara steering wheel um, it's um, pretty cool it's gonna give me excellent grip especially with my racing gloves on um, <clears throat> I have mounted a carbon fiber um, bracket so I can mount these controls to it as well as other controls uh, to it as I'm you know needing to race the car um, my harness is on um, and uh, everything's tightened down my quick release here uh, it works. It pops on and off really easily. And, uh, man, we're just going to keep it going. I'm excited. I hope you are too.